Hello and welcome back to my channel. So it is the actual 2nd of October as I'm recording this because I am a little late as always. But I wanted to share with you my Preptober workbook for NaNoWriMo 2023 and I finally have it here for you. It is, I think it's like 96 pages long so it's a bit long but I'm going to have it free on my mailing list for you to download. All you need to do is I will leave a link down below for you to sign up and by signing up you'll get access to all my downloads that I have available and this is one of them. I'm going to put it up today and it'll be there for you. Help yourself download it. I will also put it up on my Etsy and you can purchase it. That is purely just a support basis. You can get it for free through my being on my mailing list or you can go and support me and purchase it off Etsy. Either way, I don't mind. I'm just happy to share it with you. So I've made this workbook to get you through Preptober for NaNoWriMo. And if you don't know what Preptober is, basically it is the month of October where writers who are going to participate in national novel writing month basically prepare themselves to participate in the contest if you don't know what national novel writing month is I will link the website down below. Basically, it is the month of November. Writers all across the world get together and try to write 50,000 words in a month each, which works out as 1,667 words, and with the goal of writing a full 50,000 words in November. And some people will start a brand new novel. Some people will work on something that they've already been working on. You know, they're called the Nano Rebels. There's no real rules. Then you need to write the 50,000 words. For November myself, I'm just going Going to be doing a fun experiment which I will share in another video but this is my workbook to help you get prepared for participating in National Novel Writing Month and like I say it is free go and download it or just go and purchase a copy off my Etsy if you want to offer some support to me and my channel and I'm going to walk you through what's in it and how to fill it in so obviously the first page there's just a quote from one of my favourite authors for you to just get you going. That's just a welcome page from me. So this is just a welcome page from me talking about National Novel Writing Month and my journey with it. I've been doing it since 2004. So this is my 19th year doing it. I believe it's like NaNoWriMo's 25th anniversary or 20th anniversary this year, something like that. But this is my 19th NaNoWriMo. Next, this is just something funny. You print it up, put it on your door so that everybody leaves you alone so that you can write. So these are just some tips to get you through National Novel Writing Month because I remember when I did my first one back in 2004 and it was exciting but it was really daunting so I thought I'd put some tips. Obviously I've done this 18 times it's gonna be my 19th so I've learnt a lot along the way and I've had failures and disasters happen and so I just thought I'd impart some of my experience with you there's just more tips on there you could just you know go ahead and read them here in leisure so this workbook is divided into two sections one is planning your writing so it is aimed at you and planning your writing for the month of November and then the second half of it is all about planning your novel and characters and all that stuff. So the first part is going to be planning your writing and your schedule because you may be heading into November thinking you can write every single day and maybe you can. And if you can, that's absolutely brilliant, but maybe you can't. So I'm going to struggle to write every single day of November because at the beginning of November, I am off to Vegas for the 20 Books Conference. So that means I have probably a good 10 days where I'm not going to be writing. So that's like a third of the month so I need to schedule and plan that in for myself so you may have things going on in your life that you need to plan in and this is what this planning your writing is all about and it's going to help you kind of set yourself up for success with reaching the 50,000 words. Uh, just a little quote. So this is just an explanation, literally just what I've said. My contact details are on there. Feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. Like I said, I've done this for 18 years. This is my 19th. So, you know, I am happy to help. If you get stuck, if you want to just fire me some questions, if you want to just chat, just contact me. I don't mind at all. My NaNoWriMo link is on there as well. Feel free to come and follow me and come and chat on there. I don't really mind. So this is just talking about the planning your novel and explaining what's going to be going on. I will 
will explain it all to you as we go through but this is just an explanation for yourself so this is probably one of the most important things so what you need to do is print this calendar off sadly i don't have a digital version of this but if you print this off and go through the calendar and mark off every day that you know for sure that you cannot write so i know i am leaving on saturday the 4th of november and i will not be back until monday the 13th so I am going to cross all of those days off for writing days because I'm going to be travelling on a few of those days because obviously I live in England so travelling to Vegas takes a lot of travelling. I have to travel down to London and then fly to Vegas and then the same in reverse. Then there's the actual conference itself. I don't envisage being able to write at all while I'm at the conference just because it's going to be full long days and I'm going to be tired and I'm not going to put a stress on myself. So I know that a good third of this month is gone. So when I go through this calendar I'm going to cross off those days. I don't have anything else on, on these days. However, normally if I wasn't going to Vegas, I would just cross off um, every Sunday because I usually try and take every Sunday off. So that is what the number of days with events means, is how many days do you need to take off for events? The next one is number of days off. Like I say, I like to take every Sunday off. So these are not days with events. These are just days that you take off. These are days that you know you can't write for whatever reason or you just give yourself a day off every week or a couple of days a month. How many days are you taking off? The buffer days is... So what I do is I will always give myself three buffer days. So with me going to Vegas, I know there are 10 days I'm going to take off. I'm not taking any other days. So that leaves me 20 days for dedicating to NaNoWriMo. And number of days off will be just zero because I'm not planning on taking any days off because I'm off for a good chunk. But number of buffer days, I always choose three. So buffer days are there for you to take if you need. Maybe you have an emergency in the house. Maybe you're not feeling very well. Maybe you just... I don't know, call into work, anything that could happen. You just give yourself three days, which in this bit that says number of writing days remaining means that I have 17 writing days left, which used to sound very scary to me to have knocked a month down to 17. However, what I have tried to teach myself is that all these days I have scheduled as not writing doesn't mean that I can't write on those days. Just because I only have 17 writing days doesn't mean that those other 13 days I'm absolutely not allowed to write. If I don't need those buffer days I can write if I have some spare time while I'm in Vegas I can write maybe I decide to write while I'm on the plane it's something like a 10 hour flight so I might get some words done then I might you know things happen but I always plan for that I'm not going to write because then if I don't write these days are already scheduled off and it removes that guilt of not writing so what I would write the number of days remaining is I've got 17 writing days left if you get to this point and like me the number of days remaining seems super scary I know it can be really tempting to then start looking at the days you've decided to take off and say well I won't take this day off and I won't take that day off and kind of trying to force yourself to work. What that will lead to is feeling overwhelmed when you can't meet the writing days you want. This is all about looking after yourself and setting yourself up realistically with the time and days you have available. So realistically I have 17 days available and I know old me before I used to do this would have panicked at that, would have said no I am going to write every single day and I have been away in November before. A few years ago I went to Florida for a family holiday for two weeks in the November and did take my writing with me and I did write while I was away and it was hard to do and it can be nice actually to take days and time off if they are there so if you the number of days remaining seems a scary number to you don't worry about it it's not actually about winning or losing NaNoWriMo it's the whole thing is about getting your backside in the chair and getting into a writing habit and it is not about overwhelming yourself and basically killing your creativity by forcing it so the next page is just a fun little thing there are 50 books there so for every day that you write colour one of those books in and the goal is to colour all the books in obviously if you're not going to write for 50 days that's okay maybe put your days off in a specific colour so that you know that they are not days that you've not written they are just days that you chose to take off for whatever reason it's just a fun thing so this is a word count tracker now I have actually given you this one that says 50,000 words at the top and I've given you this one that doesn't have a number because you might not be writing 50,000 words you could be writing 25,000 words and or you could be writing 
writing a hundred thousand words and so you need to be able to tailor it to what you want if you are just going for fifty thousand words then this first sheet is for you so basically you've got the date which is self-explanatory the goal so if you are aiming for fifty thousand words fifty thousand words breaks down into one thousand six hundred and sixty seven words per day so by the end of each day it's got the number that you should be at the today column is to for you to say how many words you wrote and then the next the up or down column is to say whether you're up or down so if you your goal was to write 1667 words today on day one and you actually wrote 2000 words in the stay column you'd write 2000 and then in the up column you would write how many words you were up and then the total would be 2000 and you just go through this every single day writing your word count and how far you are up or down for that day and then the actual total and like i say this is the same but this is just for you to put your own word count goal in there with your own daily goal so sometimes i've gone for 100,000 words so obviously day one the goal is 3,334 I think it is or 44 something like that but the, yeah like I said there's a blank one and there's a pre-filled in one for you use either one either works it's just a way for you to track your words and for I love trackers for me they're what keeps me motivated so sprint tracker one of my favorite ways of writing is to write in sprints and this is what I learned in like my second NaNoWriMo so all the way back in 2005 was to write in sprints it's basically you set a timer and you just write and all you do in that timer is write so you can set a timer for 10 minutes 20 minutes 25 minutes an hour whatever suits you whatever your sweet spot is so i know for me that my sweet spots are the 10 minutes or 20 minutes depending on how i'm feeling that day but for this example like how long do you want to sprint so this is what this is so in this example i've put that i have 26 writing days so here you would fill in how many writing days which we worked out just before then you put how long do you want to sprint for so on this example I've put for 10 minutes 10 minutes is actually what I do a lot of the time I find 10 minutes is easy especially when I'm busy I'm like oh I fit a quick 10 minute sprint of writing in and then how many words do you get per sprint I don't actually write 800 per sprint but that's what it is in this example for some reason I probably write about 500 words per sprint I think that probably should have said 20 minutes instead of 10 I might to correct that anyway yeah let's so how long do you sprint for we'll change that to 20 minutes to match the 800 words because that's more realistic so pretend that says 20 minutes and not 10 so i've got 26 writing days i'm going to sprint for 20 minutes each sprint and each sprint i roughly write about 800 words what this is is basically how many words do you want to write for your novel so in this example i want to write 70,000 words in november it's just a little bit over the 50,000 word goal but that is what I need to write for my project. So I'm going to take my seven, 70,000 word goal and divide that by 800 and that gives me 87.5. I'm going to round that up, that gives me 88. So what that means is it's going to take me 88 writing sprints to write 70,000 words. And this is how I break my days down and make it feel so much easier for myself because I always found that breaking something like this down just makes it feel so much better, it's bite size. So I know that to get 70,000 words I need to do 88 writing sprints across the month and in this example I've put I only have 26 writing days so 88 sprints divided by the 26 writing days means that every day I need to do 3.38 sprints per day so I'm going to round that up to four naturally so basically I need to do four writing sprints per day that's not a lot really that's four times 20 minutes I can find those through my day super easy maybe a 20 minute in the morning before everybody else gets up maybe a 20 minute in the afternoon before everyone else comes home and a couple of 20 minute sprints in the evening and that's it my word count's done and I've managed to live the rest of my day around getting these four sprints in this is what this is for it's about breaking the big goal down into something that seems a lot more manageable so you change this based on your days and things like that now if you don't know and have never written sprints to get this goal I suggest you test it do a couple of 10 minute timers and write do a couple of 20 minute timers and write Right, and kind of see what your average word count is and use that in this example here and also use see which one feels better for you like say sometimes 10 minutes feels better for me and sometimes 20 minutes feel better and 25 anything anything over 25 minutes never really works for me but there are people that can do one hour and two hour focus sessions it's just how you work so this is basically a tracker i like to track my sprints i have an achiever personality and so this works very well for me i literally will write the date and then i'll write how long my sprint was so 20 minutes and how many words i got in that 20 minutes and i'm 
for the example we just used, I need to do four. So obviously the date to the top four will be the same day. The duration will all be 20 minutes. That is how many words I wrote each one. And I will print this sheet out several times and just fill it up. And it just feels really nice to do that for me. And you can do the same. Just print it off as much as you want. But I just remind myself at the top as well, I want a day to eight sprints and it's four sprints a day. It stops me getting overwhelmed and overworking because I am such a pain for overworking. If I need to write, I will literally sit and write all day. Day. Whereas if I can tell myself I need four sprints, I can maybe make myself only do four sprints and then get to the rest of the stuff instead of getting behind on everything else. Yeah, so it's just another couple of sprint trackers there for you. Uh, just a little bit. Motivation from me to you. Keep writing even when you think it sucks because it will feel that way sometimes, believe me. So I've just thrown in some pep talks. There are four pep talks just for you to read to keep you going through your journey because writing is a solo experience and I just wanted some words for you. So you can save these pep talks and read one a week, start of every week, just to keep you going. So this one is about imperfection because I don't know about you, but I am always plagued by trying to get my words perfect first time. And it never... So we're on to the second section now, which is planning your novel. So we've planned your writing and how many words you're going to try and write a day and what days you're going to write on. So now it's time to plan your novel. The way I have divided this workbook is in two, four weeks. So this is for the month of October. So it's for you to do one section per week to work on it until the 1st of November. So the first week is developing your idea. The second week is characters. The third week is setting. And the fourth week is your plot and outline of your story. You can mix them up. You can do them all in one week if you want. Whatever suits you. But I've just divided it up. So it's got a nice pace for the month. So the idea development section, I actually have a video series on creating ideas. I will link that for you so you can go and watch any of those videos. It talks about brainstorming and how to choose your idea and where we get our ideas from. I also have a playlist of characters and creating characters. That playlist isn't actually finished. I'm still recording some of those videos, but there are creating your characters. There's a profile sheet in there and everything like that. Um, and then settings and plot outline are all in here as well. So week one is your ideas. So it's just a talk about ideas and how I work my ideas. Like I say, I go more in depth in this in my um, ideas playlist, which I will link for you. Um, I really love Ray Bradbury's book, so I've talked about it in here. That's I'll leave you to read that instead of me reading it to you. More for you to talk. So one of the things I like to do to get ideas is to write pages where I put things I love, things I hate, things I fear and things I'm drawn to and just throw words down. It does explain in here, but it's basically setting a 10 minute timer. So I'll just show you, there it is. So things I love. So set a 10 minute timer with this page and write things I love. What do you love? The rain, the moon, nighttime, winter, Christmas, and just, you know, just throw them on there in any way. Do the same for things I hate. So what do I hate? Spiders, slime, the colour pink, girly things. Just put anything on there that you don't like. And then it's the same for things I fear, things I fear, things I need, things I am drawn to and things that creep me out. And it's okay if some of these things repeat across the pages, that's fine. The whole idea of this, and it's explained in the workbook, is to just kind of spark your creativity with things. I think I've talked about this in another video, I can't remember which one it is. And you know, you could have, what do you fear? Maybe you fear spiders and your fascinated by mirrors and maybe you're drawn to boxes or notebooks or something like that you could put them together in a story depending on what kind of story you're writing it's basically just to give yourself ideas and to get that creativity flowing there's a section here for you to brainstorm and there's another page there for you to get brainstorming as well right, like i said just read these bits that go with it in your own time i'm not going to sit here and read everything for you because it's 90 odd pages long so then this talks about how to choose your idea and it's just walking you through the process of that. I think I have a video on choosing your idea. There is another blank sheet for you to just let your imagination roam free. Whatever your idea is, just, just jot down about it and see where your imagination takes you. I am such a fan of setting timers. Set a timer for 20 minutes on this part. Whatever your idea is, maybe there is a box and you open it and there's a golden spider in it or the character opens it. What happens next? Go ahead, brainstorm. Let's see 
see where it takes you see where the idea goes and just use this page for that so that was for the premise now this bit of the workbook is talking about developing your idea again i'll let you read this all again but it's talking about how to take the idea from the premise that you just got a moment ago and to develop it and this is why this is set over like a week because you're probably not going to do this all in one day you'll probably do it over the week and over a few days but it is to just develop your idea so in this example like i've used speed so the previous thing was the premise is a young cop must prevent a bomb from exploding aboard a city bus by keeping the speed above 50 miles per hour so you're going to develop the idea so i've used here like a series of questions to flesh the story out or how they might have done it so how did the bomb get on the bus why is the bomb on the bus what's the motivation behind the bomber's actions why are the people on the bus and what roles do they play in the story and how did the cop come to be on bus in the first place and how is the presence of the bomb actually discovered and these kinds of questions will help you to kind of uncover your story at the bottom so if you take any story like take i mentioned harry potter you know the whole premise behind that is harry potter finds out he is a wizard well the first question that is how he how did he find out why did he not know he was a wizard and you know you just lead it on from there and then it just takes you through a bit more of developing the story so it's talking talking about here about throw challenges and and problems that your characters might face there's a sheet here for you to fill it in second week is going to be about your characters themselves so like i said i do have a playlist on developing characters i have actually included in fact before we go to there there is a pep talk so yeah read that that's just to keep you going but characters so talking about the characters and how they are the bedrock for any story going and across this second week the workbook has you exploring your characters creating them creating their backstories coming up with everything about them and like i said i do have a playlist which i will link and my playlist actually i do have a video on a profile sheet which goes through filling all of this in and explains it to you so go and check that out i won't go through this bit by bit now because i've already done that but that is in here for you i will say print this character sheet off for all your major players so you're a good guy you're a bad guy romantic interest second characters supporting characters mentors everybody like that Mul print this sheet off multiple times and fill it in for all the different characters believe me the better you know the characters the better they come across on the page and then this is talking about the character arc i do have a video i've recorded and i haven't edited it yet and hopefully it'll be up soon by the time you get to week two talking about creating character arcs and i'll go more in depth in that so that be this bit but it's quite i think it's quite a long video and i will try and get that up for you now this is just notes anything that comes to mind for your character creation as you're doing it as you're creating them more notes pages personality types i like playing with this and um, this is just a personal interest kind of thing but what's their personality type because people's personality type means that they will react and do things in totally different ways to each other so it's it's just talking all about developing your character's personality types here and then once you've kind of figured out who they are as a person and their personality it's talking about getting to know them so have your character write a letter to you because obviously one character is going to write a different kind of letter than somebody else is so how you know example harry potter would write a completely different letter than thor for example and it's the same here i like this writing a scene your character at a theme park and describing their experiences and you don't have to put a theme park you can put any kind of scene but place them in it and just write the scene because i always say that the best way to get to know your character is actually to write them and to play with them on the page and so this section is for you to do that there's a write a letter page and there is the write a scene page doesn't have to be anything perfect it is just for you this just for you to get to know your character another thing i like to do with my characters is creating a visual for them and what represents them so for my death dealer series ethan's a really good one he's like six foot five he's got like mousy blonde hair he drives kind of this big suv kind of vehicle he's got big leather boots so when i would be printing off a visual on this page and just sticking all those things on i would find an actor who looks like him I I would find all the kind of things that represent him like the leather jacket the big boots and that kind of stuff and creating this visual helps me while i'm writing the story because i can just refer back to it every time i need it because believe me you will forget details about them again do this for every character that you really that is a main character and that's going to show up a lot in your book because it's a good way of keeping track of what they look i have a nice folder of celebrity images who my characters are most like so when i want to describe one of them 
them, I can just quickly flick to that image and get inspiration from it. Week three is your setting. So probably, I know I used to think setting wasn't that important, but it actually is. So there's a pep talk for you again. Read that one at your own leisure. But going into setting, so your setting is important because it does dictate a lot of your story. So my Death Deal series is set in modern day England. It would be totally different if I had set it in Victorian England. The way they dress, the way they act and everything would be completely different from one another. So that's what I mean by settings. And again, maybe I'd set the book in outer space, which would make it even more different. And a lot of times the setting will dictate the narrative of your story so that's why we're giving week three the setting so that you can go into it and see how the setting and everything about it will affect your story and we talk about you know where is your story set so is it situated in victorian england or the swiss alps or a prison on an alien planet who so identify the inhabitants of your chosen setting and i don't mean the characters in your book i mean the people around it so in my death dealer series it is just normal everyday people but because it's magical there are magical people and there are non-magical people. If I was writing this in a prison, as I've given the example here, there would be prison guards, there would be a warden, there would be prisoners and so that changes the set again and then when, what's the time period for your setting and story because again that will dictate a lot of things. Like I say here, if you set it in the 1960s there's not going to be any mobile phones and if you were set a to set it now for example there probably wouldn't be many rotary phones about or they would be classed as relics so this is just exploring your setting we've got some notes here because you know there might be things that you want to drop down so that you can remember them setting list is maybe your story has different settings within your overall setting so my death dealer series for example is set in modern day england but there are settings within that so there is the mortuary where harper works there is the small flat where she lives there is the hospital which is part of where she works and then we also have her going to her mother's house and those are different settings and in those settings she will act differently so when she is at home in her small dingy flat she acts a lot differently to when she is in her mother's house which is all very pristine and don't touch anything so I have a list of se settings in my story and they will kind of dictate how Harper moves through the book this is just for you to brainstorm your list of settings that you will need week four is outlining your book another pep talk from me just read that at your own leisure. So we're going to talk about plot and this in itself is probably going to be a whole video on its own because it's quite long and I haven't done anything on it and this video is already quite long now so I'm not going to go actually through this for you but I'm just going to show you it's divided into act one and I have everything explained for you the opening image the theme the setting the catalyst the refusal all the usual standard stuff and I it's got the stakes point of no return and then what I've done is I've given you blank sheets with them for for you to fill in yourself so if you go through this bit this is an explanation and then there's the sheet here for you to fill in i will make a video for this but it's very long on its own if i was to add this it would take this video to over an hour which would be crazy so we've got act two it's all the same the different aspects of act two and an explanation for them and then your sheet to fill in i mean feel free if you know all these things yourself to go ahead and do this but i will try and get a video uploaded before the final week when you need to be doing this so that you can do it along with me back to part two new plan more challenges dark black moment blah, blah blah the sketch for the second part act three it's just the same talking you through what every part means giving you an explanation and the sheet for you to fill in yourself and that is it and i hope that this workbook will help you to get your story ready for national novel writing month and as i said if you have any problems don't hesitate to contact me my contact details are down below message me on facebook email me if you want i don't mind i love helping people and i love writing and i see a typo there you can email meet i will change that to me at i apologize but yeah so i hope this was helpful for you go and download it for free from my mailing list or go and support me by downloading it from etsy either way i don't mind i just help hope that it's a fantastic tool to get you through preptober to prepare for your novel now and don't forget to give this video a like, subscribe to my channel and give that bell a good old notification and I shall see you next time. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this.